So now I'm going to talk about the way I create the medleys, just the way I put everything together, the way I build the track list. So um, usually when I begin working on a medley, um, I have a pretty good idea of, uh, of which song should go first. And in the case of FF8, uh, it was either going to be the landing or Liberi Fatali. And I chose the landing because um, I thought it was like a perfect introduction with those heartbeats at the beginning, this very mysterious vibe, um, this slow build-up and this sudden explosion when uh, the band enters. But I also wanted Liberi Fatali in there because uh, it's such an iconic piece. And uh, I worked a lot on the transition between those two because I really wanted it to be seamless. And I wanted the whole thing to have this very progressive metal vibe. Which is why I asked uh, Muneyuki Kawakami to uh, record these big guitars. And why my drumming is also very punchy and in your face. So this whole four minute introduction is, is very busy and, and quite hectic. And so right after that, I felt that things needed to calm down. It needed kind of a break and um, something like a peaceful theme. And I almost instantly thought of Fisherman's Horizon, which to me is one of the most beautiful melodies Wematsu's ever written. And uh, so originally it went from Liberi Fatali right into Fisherman. But then one day I thought uh, it needed some kind of an interlude in between. So I, uh, I brought the, the Balem Garden theme, which kind of serves as, as an intro to Fisherman. And I think it really works well that way. And then I started uh, thinking about possible arrangements for Fisherman. And I think I pretty quickly thought of, uh, of a solo flute for the melody, because I think the flute perfectly underlines the beauty and purity of the theme. And then I got the idea of suddenly breaking into song. Because I remember the beautiful a cappella rendition that Lady Rims had done. Plus I'd never done a song before in any of my medleys and I always like to try new things. So yeah, in the end I think it worked out pretty well and I'm, I'm very proud of that whole fisherman section. Well in fact I loved it so much that I decided to bring it back at the end of the medley. So yeah, and then the question is, which song should come next? Well, the thing is, I keep a list, I make this list of uh, every song that I definitely want to include in the medley. So I have this list, and then it's like a giant puzzle I have to solve. I have to put all these pieces together, and each piece has to fit perfectly. So the way it usually works is, um, like, the ending of a song could remind me of the beginning of another, maybe because it's at the same tempo or in the same key or maybe because it has the same vibe so I would just try it out I'd put these pieces back to back and see if it works sometimes it works instantly sometimes I have to tweak it a bit like maybe adding a few bars in between to bring a modulation or maybe an accelerando which is um, gradually increasing the speed and this brings me to the subject of transitions here you can see um, the transition between the man with the machine gun and under her control. Now the man with the machine gun has a tempo of 85 BPM, while under her control is at 105. So what happens here is uh, there's an accelerando over these 5 bars, and so we begin at 85 BPM, and then we gradually accelerate till we reach 105. And since it happens over 5 bars, in the end it feels very natural and almost imperceptible. So I'm gonna show you a few other transitions because I think transitions really are the key to making a great medley. Now the first one I'm going to talk about is the transition from dead end to the mission. Now that one is like the perfect case scenario because dead end ends 
on a very long sustained note. So basically you can put anything on top. And the next song, The Mission, just happens to uh, begin with just one instrument. It's just the strings playing. So you have the, the last chord from a dead end, and right on top you have the strings at the beginning, plus the original keys of the songs uh, happened to work together. Now yeah, I always try to keep the original keys of the songs, but sometimes it's just not possible. So you have to, to make some changes, you have to transpose them to get them in the key that you need. But it wasn't the case here, uh, both songs just happened to work perfectly together when put back to back. That really is the best case scenario. And actually the same thing happens with the next song. So the transition from the mission to the spy. Uh, the mission ends on the same kind of um, sustained note. And um, what I did is I took the bass part from the spy and I put it underneath that note. And that makes for a very natural transition. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, sometimes I have to transpose the songs uh, in order for them to work harmonically speaking. And that's how my mind ended up beginning in C major, whereas the original begins in G. Because um, Ami ended in C, so for the transition to really work smoothly, I simply transposed my mind to C. And another interesting transition is the one from Never Look Back to The Legendary Beast. Now what I did there is, the bass line from Never Look Back actually still plays uh, during the 8 first bars of The Legendary Beast. So in the end, there's this continuous bass line, which is common to both songs. And um, it doesn't even sound like there's a transition going on. It's like Never Look Back naturally blends into the legendary beast. So when I build the tracklist, I try to fit as many songs as possible. But the thing is, Nobuo Ematsu's OSTs always feature many different styles. So it's quite a challenge to create a medley that really flows naturally and a medley that makes sense musically speaking. And I often get asked uh, questions in the comments like uh, Why didn't you include that particular song? I love it so much and you forgot about it. It's not that I forgot to put it or it's not that I don't like it. It's just that it didn't have its place. It didn't belong in the medley. Or it can also be that I feel that particular song has already been covered so many times and so brilliantly by other people that I don't feel the need to cover it myself. Plus it leaves room for other amazing songs that have rarely been covered. So as a result, there often are uh, many outtakes. I've released a few already. Uh, pieces that work perfectly on their own, but just didn't work in the context of a medley. Also, one interesting thing is, originally the medley was just one big piece, and it lasted 30 minutes. But as always, some new ideas came, and uh, the medley kept growing and growing until it reached like 40 minutes, and that's when I took the decision to split it in two. So for example, um, my mind, which can be heard at the very end of part one, uh, wasn't there in the first draft. It used to go from Amy directly into Breezy. And when I took the decision to split the medley into I had to give part one a proper ending, uh, which is when I brought my mind, which was an outtake, I had recorded it, and uh, I brought my mind to end part one, and I think it turned out to be uh, a good decision in the end. Same thing happened for uh, Retaliation in the castle. They just weren't there to begin with. It used to go from a uh, force away directly into Never Look Back. And one day, I woke up with this idea, because yeah, inspiration sometimes comes to me when waking up. It's crazy, it's like I have, I hear sections of the medleys um, playing in my head. 
And actually, a couple of weeks ago, I woke up with a section from the、uh, the future FF10 medley in my head. So maybe it'll be the next one. Who knows? So anyway, yeah. One day I woke up and I heard the choir from the castle. I heard it playing in my head, and then I kept singing it all day long. And I thought, this has to be in the medley. It has to. And then the challenge is to figure out where in the medley this new song is going to fit. Because remember, the medley at that point was supposed to be finished, and、uh, so you have to find some room somewhere and make some new transitions and some new connections so that it works out in the end. And so for the castle,、um, I thought the best moment in the medley was right between Force Your Way and and、uh, Never Look Back. Uh, but in order for that to work,、uh, I had to find、um, something to connect Force Your Way and the castle, because the castle、um, starts with this very quiet piano moment, and there was simply no way of directly connecting it to Force Your Way, which is when I thought of Retaliation, because Retaliation starts off really strong and 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 calms down near the end. So I thought. It would be a good way to to link Force Your Way to the castle. Plus, I instantly felt that I could have fun with、um, Retaliation. I wanted to make it sound like a Symphony X song. Symphony X is a progressive metal band that I'm a huge fan of. And so yeah, we had some fun with、uh, Dr. Pez and Hat Tracks on that song. They laid down some incredible stuff. So I was just mentioning Symphony X, and、uh, right now I'd like to talk a bit about my influences, my musical influences, because I definitely think that the artists that I listen to、uh, play a major role into my whole medley creative process. I listen to a lot of music. I have quite eclectic tastes, but when it comes to FF medleys, I always have one specific style in mind, and that is progressive music. So basically, progressive music is a genre in which、uh, you have freedom to do absolutely what you want. You can have a song that mixes jazz, classical, metal, and、uh, electronic music. It can have like crazy instrumental section right in the middle,、um, crazy solos and experimentations. Anything goes really, and you don't have to follow the usual rules of songwriting. Like most of the songs you'll hear on the radio, will all have the same structure, the same style, and will never be more than four minutes long. Whereas in progressive music, it's perfectly normal to have a song that would last 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or 40 minutes, like Dream Theater's Six Degrees. So I've been listening to progressive rock and progressive metal for years now.、Uh, bands like Dream Theater, Symphony X, Opeth, Haken. Uh, Steven Wilson,、uh, Spokespeer, The Flower Kings, Yes, Genesis, Pink Floyd, the list goes on and on. And all of these bands are major influences、uh, when it comes to、um, arranging these medleys. I already mentioned Neil Morse in my previous video. Now Neil Morse is one of my all-time favorite songwriters and musicians, and he plays progressive rock, of course. And、so basically, whenever you hear me using a Mellotron or a Hammond organ, it's definitely the Neil Morse influence speaking. Also,、uh, the way I constructed the very end of the FF8 medley, with、uh, the Fisherman section being repeated in different keys and different orchestrations, that is a typical way of ending、uh, a typical progressive song. You can hear it now, played by the amazing band Transatlantic. My drumming style and my drum tracks are also heavily influenced by progressive music. I think I can even say a very Mike Portnoy influenced.、Uh, Mike Portnoy is、um, probably my favorite artist of all time. He's this genius drummer and arranger, a former drummer of Dream Theater. That still feels a bit weird to say. And、uh, yeah, basically, I discovered progressive music 15 years ago with Dream Theater. And、uh, I picked up the drums right after hearing Mike Portnoy's insane drumming on Sins from Memory. And、uh, yeah, I think I can safely say that if it wasn't for him, 
I probably wouldn't be here speaking to you about the medleys because, well, there just wouldn't be any medleys to talk about. So yeah, in true progressive fashion, uh, my medleys always end up being super long. I just can't help it. And in the case of FF8, I just love this OST so much. I quickly realized that um, this medley would be a big one. So earlier I was mentioning inspiration. What's funny about inspiration is that it really can come anywhere, anytime, you know, like melodies, arrangement ideas, uh, possible transitions. Um, when I'm working on a medley, I pretty much, I'm pretty much working on it 24-7 in my head. It's always playing in my head. Uh, it often happens when I'm just, for example, walking outside, or um, I often go swimming, and whenever I'm swimming, there's always you know, work music in my head. Um, it can really happen even in, in the last places you think of. And I'm gonna tell you something, this is a bit of trivia, and this is a true story. Um, I heard the very end of the FF8 medley, so right after you hear the Fisherman's Horizon theme in four different keys, and then there's this big finale with the last score. I heard that while I was in the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't the most glamorous way of, uh, of composing, I guess, but uh, I, heard, I heard it, and I was like, this is exactly the way it has to end. And so I memorized it, and I recorded it as soon as I could. Um, but yeah, it really comes out of the blue, um, especially when you least expect it. So here you go, this is um, the way it works for me. Uh, I definitely have a lot of fun putting together these, uh, these track lists and um, solving the puzzle. I think it's probably the easiest part of the whole process. Uh, the hardest part being um, mixing. So yeah, this is it guys, um, hope you enjoyed this, and feel free to comment, of course, let me know what your favorite tracks are, if there's uh, specific transitions or moments in the medley that you prefer, I'm always curious to know about that. Also, let me know if you have any questions, uh, maybe I can answer them in the next video. Uh, feel free to ask about anything you want, um, the guests, the arrangements, the tracklist, the recording, if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover. Just let me know.